what's the best battery for your Instax camera? In this video, we test different AA batteries from dirt cheap to expensive. The results sure surprised me, so make sure to stick until the end. We're testing six different batteries, King Ever Heavy Duty, Ever Ready Heavy Duty, Fujitsu Premium Alkalines, Energizer Max Alkalines, Sony Rechargeables, and Panasonic NL Lights. Now, I'm not sponsored by any of these battery makers. It's just that I find that these six batteries are the easiest to find and at least three of them are easy to find all around the world. Since I'm in the Philippines, I'm using Philippine Peso and US Dollar for the prices. To test each battery, I loaded up a cartridge with 10 used films and the black plastic cover to simulate actual use. We'll run the camera and shoot and repeat until it runs out and shows the low battery blinking lights. All the batteries are fresh out of the packaging. They're all in good condition and not expired. For the rechargeables, I charge them to full before using them. Just to give you an idea what Fujifilm thinks a battery should last, it says in the manual that a pair of batteries should last about 10 packs or 100 shots or so. First off are the very cheap King Ever batteries. I bought them off the street vendor for 20 pesos for a pack or about 5 pesos or 8 cents per piece. These are cheap and popular in my country. Upon loading, here's the result. Blinking lights, meaning they don't have enough power or juice to start the camera. So it's safe to say that these batteries simply just won't work on Instax cameras. Next up are the EverReady Heavy Duty batteries. EverReady is a well-known brand and I bought them at my local supermarket for about 90 pesos for the whole pack or about 22 pesos or 40 cents per piece. Let's load up these Everettis and see. And surprise, surprise, another set of blinking lights. They don't work either, so I wouldn't recommend this either for use with Instax cameras. What's going on here? Well, it's not exactly the fault of the Everetti and King Ever batteries. These batteries are what we call heavy duty or carbon zinc batteries. They work fine with toys and remote controls and clocks, but it's not advisable to use them in your Instax cameras. That's why Fujifilm actually recommends using alkaline batteries for Instax cameras. Let's go look at an alkaline battery on the cheaper side of things. So these are Fujitsu Premiums. I chose Fujitsu well just because they sounded like Fujifilm. So these are on the cheaper end and they cost me about 70 pesos per pack or about 17 pesos or 30 cents per piece. I put them inside and tested the camera. It took me about an hour or so because it shot so many. I thought the batteries would croak after 100 shots but the Fujitsu's kept on going. Finally, at 262 shots or about 26 packs of film, the battery warning flashed and I couldn't take any pictures anymore. And 262 pictures is a lot considering this battery is one of the more affordable ones in the market today. Let's see how the more expensive batteries would compare. Next up is Energizer's Max Alkaline Batteries. I chose this because this is the brand that you'll find everywhere, especially at convenience stores and gas stations. I bought this for about 120 pesos for two pieces or about 60 pesos or one dollar per piece. And as usual, I loaded my camera and proceeded to shoot. Again, this took a while. The energizers also passed the 100 mark set by Fujifilm and it started slowing down by about 140 shots. Finally, the camera started showing the blinking lights at 172 shots or about 17 packs of film. 172 shots is also a lot, but I admit I was a bit disappointed that it only reached up to 17 packs because of the price. It's not that much of a value considering it costs two to three times the cost of other alkaline batteries. It's not my first choice considering I'm on a tight budget. Now, if you are on a tight budget, why not use rechargeables? Well, I tried looking for a cheap one and an expensive one. So I found these cheap Sony rechargeable batteries online for about 50 pesos for two or 25 pesos or 43 cents per piece. I chose them because Sony is a well-known brand and I've been seeing these on the market for several years now, but I haven't tried them. So after charging, I loaded them in the camera and surprise, at least, well, at least the camera started shooting, but after just four shots, the camera started slowing down. And just three shots later, at seven pictures, the blinking lights appeared and the camera would not shoot anymore. 
I'm not really that surprised because rechargeables like these are only 1.2 volts and not 1.5 volts like other AA batteries. That's just how the rechargeable batteries work. My advice is to just steer clear away from these specific batteries and just buy better rechargeables. Now, speaking of better rechargeables, for the more expensive rechargeable battery, I chose the Eneloops. These specific batteries are called Eneloop lights and they are cheaper than the regular white Eneloops because they have less capacity. The Eneloop lights cost about 230 pesos per pack for about 115 pesos or $2 per piece. While the regular white Eneloops are almost twice as much at 216 pesos or $3.8 per piece. After charging, I tried the batteries again and like the two alkalines, this one also took a bit of time. I was amazed to find that they also lasted beyond a hundred shots. Around the 140 shot mark, the charging slowed and the batteries finally gave up by 158 shots or almost 16 packs of film. So those are the results so far. Here's the recap. The King Evers did not finish. Everready Heavy Duties also did not finish. The Fujitsu Premiums lasted 262 shots or 26 packs. Energizer Max Alkaline lasted 172 or 17 packs. Sony Rechargeables just 7 shots or not even 1 pack. And the Eneloop Lights lasted 158 or 16 packs. And the overall winner is the Fujitsu Premium Alkalines. So what can we learn from all this? Well, battery type is more important than brand. When it comes to Instax cameras, alkaline batteries work the best. While I'm using Fujitsu Premiums, other brands also work. The brands I've tested so far are Fujitsu, Panasonic, Toshiba, Everready Gold, Pear Deer, and I've also used some Kodak and some other brands as well. My experience is as long as they are good quality, not expired alkaline batteries, they will work well with your Instax camera. So don't worry too much about the brand. And as we've seen, rechargeables will work with a camera, but only for a limited time. Make sure that they are fully charged. Make sure to use low self-discharge batteries like any loops. Also, just a caveat, my test is a continuous use test. In actual use, the batteries might not last as long as my test because we don't use the camera continuously. We usually just shoot a few shots or so, and then we just store the camera back inside the camera bag until the next event happens. In my experience, the alkaline last around five to seven packs over the course of maybe around a few months. My advice would be to replace the batteries after five to seven packs and always keep a spare pair of batteries with you in your camera bag. Do not fully drain your batteries. Fully drained batteries leak faster and will damage your camera and they might also lead to jammed film. Remove the batteries after every use and keep them in a plastic bag just in case they leak while in storage. So there you go, those are your Instax batteries for you. I hope this has helped you in finding which is the best battery and battery type for your camera. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you found this helpful. And until then, see you on the next video.